Hey you guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. I'm with my buddy Kobe today and we are going out to fish one of those forgotten techniques. Let's go fishing. The goal today is to go out and catch them on the grub. This is one of those universal techniques that has worked for decades, still works amazing today, but with the advancements in swim baits, a lot of people have completely forgotten about them. So today we're going grub fishing. Now that's not all we're going to do. We'll probably throw topwater spy baits. We might throw some swim baits to keep it honest, but the goal is to get out there, fish those single tail grubs, teach you guys how to do it, and hopefully catch some big fish along the way. Fishing. Uh -huh. Simple as can be. She's not quit. They're so feisty in the summer. He's one a net would speed up this whole process. <laughs> there we go. Look at that. That's the way to start right First there. First part of the day. Right in the side of the face. Get a grub. Pretty fish, just beautiful. Thanks, honey. Bunch of wood up here. Long to one. Little one way out there. Hey, buddy. Hey, I'm on the board anyway. We're gonna take it. <laughs> so the grub, single tail grubbing has been around forever. If you're not familiar, the concept is first, a single tail curly grub, handful of brands make them, pretty simple. You just put that on a lead head. Uh, I grew up in the West, out there. We did 100% of it on this style head, which is not a head you see used a lot anymore. This is a darter head. You can also throw it on a ball head, uh, but the concept is simple. Treat it like a swim bait. Throw it out, slow roll it back. We'll get more into the details as we go, but it's an old technique that still works today. Oh, they're doing the old turn and look. Hey, little buddy. Nice one there. We backed out to a little deeper water. Went to a little heavier head, a quarter ounce. This, by the way, I'm fishing this, even though we're doing an old school technique, I'm fishing it on bait finesse, a newer method in the US. So I'm fishing it on ultralight bait casting gear. Well, it's not actually ultralight. This is a 610 medium light with a BFS reel, seven pound fluorocarbon with that five inch Yamamoto on there. Just slow swimming that thing. Same way you would swim a paddle tail swim bait. This is something that was done before paddle, t paddle tails existed. Well, I guess they existed, but they weren't popular yet. Like anybody who's watching this video 
20s and below is like, what are you doing right now swimming a grub? Anybody 30s and above is like, I used to do that. We all just got away from it when paddle tails got so popular. And there's a reason, right? Like, Kitex smash them. Exxon Swammer smashes them. Uh, so many of these good baits. The Bastrix before the Kitex smashed them. If you're on a lake where a lot of people are throwing paddle tail swim baits, grubs never lost their effectiveness. We just stopped using them. They just fell out of fashion, if you will, uh, and got thrown so little that people stopped talking about them. But these old school techniques like this, and there are others, maybe, I mean, this is pretty fun so far. Maybe we'll do a series of forgotten techniques. I don't know, but it works and it's very simple and you can do it for, you know, a couple bucks. It's awesome. Ding. Just to make me cringe. We're back. Get back up. Got him. Little guy. Little one, but I'll take him. The one that I lost back there that was out at the end of the cast was a big fish. I turned her broadside when I hit her and she was tall. I just, just didn't quite have enough, but it's all right. Hopefully we get a shot at another big one. There we go. Now we're talking. That's a beautiful fish right there. Just let me get that grub out of there. Just swimming. That five inch. That one's a Yamamoto double tail. Baby bass color. Little owner head. We'll get to that in a second. I'll sit down and show you the exact gear, but guys, it works not complicated you can do this <laughs> it's all good i'm well aware i can put all my love for this so I, I, i'm okay with it i just suck i just suck since this spring this is it hey i got him this is it might be the smallest <laughs> it catches all of them it catches them all look at that about half the size, but he's built right for future generations. Look at that. What do you think, Matt? A few more years, he'll be built. He's got the gun. He's got the gun. <laughs> I'll take it. He's really telling about the rest of it, guys. Perfect. Yep. <laughs> I can't be fast enough. We got up here dirt shallow. Kobe's got the motor up <laughs> trying to get us turned around. And up here in the dirt, that one took a shot. This one, I downsized. We've been throwing five inch grubs all day. I've been throwing a Yamamoto. He's mostly been throwing a Kalins, a Berkeley. I dropped down to the little four inch Yamamoto. Just a little smaller profile and got that bite almost immediately. <laughs> little guy on the spy bait. Oh, I didn't know what you picked up. He's got a drink. Nursery. Got that little guy on the spy bait. That's the spin John. 
just wanted to to check it basically we've we got a late start we got out here midday ground through the heat of the day i mean it was not easy uh, we had a handful of fish follow the grubs but they wouldn't eat them they just tail them and we started wondering you know is it the grub is it the day what is it so we threw some other stuff through the spy bait through top water i don't remember what else we threw we threw quite a few things never got a bite on any of it the grub was all we caught fish on and they were just spread out but we just got a couple smaller fish on the grub so i picked up a spy bait plucked one off right away i think this chop we've got on the water is helping us out now only more of them made it that well right down the hatch Bit it like you're supposed to, right? Come here, buddy. Look how he ate that. That one did what he was supposed to. Came ripping right over and grabbed it. And a little grub. Chunky little fella. like to hook a real one. Thank you, my friend. Another nice one on the grub and check this out. He just spit out a whole crawdad. Too cool. Thank you. Just needed that chop. Good job. <laughs> Says a lot though that he came back. Yeah, came back a third time. This guy tapped me twice and I went back through it and he came back for a little bit more. It's amazing what a little bit of wind will do. this crowd out on the deck or is this another one? That's another one. <laughs> I threw the other one over. Maybe that's what we've been missing all day, man. Seriously. We should have been throwing little jigs. Here we are. We're swimming grubs a foot off the bottom. They're pounding <laughs> crawd at. All the fish are suspended in the column. Makes sense. Fish chased in Matt's grub. I think bit it too, right? Yeah, he bit, bit it. Me. Bit him once, 
And then I was like, well, I'm gonna follow up with a drop shot, see if we'll get him to come after it. I just kind of crawled it along really slow through the same area that she had been kind of swimming around and she came over and ate it. I got pants. You did? Yep. You think I've never caught that before? <laughs> well done. That's a good one. I'll take it. Another one hit the grub. Swimming along. It's a pretty fish anytime. Too. I've tied up every which way. Oh yeah. That one got some good air too. Good air. Oh, dear, that was awesome. No, he was clear up there behind that dock. This fish came out of a foot of water. He looks like a fish that would come out of a foot of water. A little smaller than some of the others, but that's okay. I went to that cinnamon with black flake. Been throwing baby bass, cinnamon with black flake, smoke with black flake, motor oil. What are you throwing now? Uh, I've got smoke on again. Smoke? Mm -hmm. Catch them of all kinds of colors. We're just switching between them, looking for something that's a little different gets a little bigger bite, something like that. We're not done fishing yet, but we took a minute to just tuck into a calm spot here so I could kind of walk you guys through the finer details of this grub fishing technique. I mean, there's a lot of ways to fish a grub. Uh, a lot of people use them as trailers on different baits. You can split shot them and Carolina rig them. Uh, but the main thing that we like doing with them is swimming them. And like I said earlier today, there's, I mean, multiple styles of heads you can use. This is the head Kobe's been using all day. And again, I'm gonna link all this stuff in the video description, depending on the device you're watching this on. If you're on our website, if you're on tacticalbassin.com, you just scroll down, it's all right there. But if you're on YouTube or Facebook or something, you may need to go below the video and click more, or you might need to go below the video and click the three little dots, then scroll down and click them again. It just depends on the device you're on. But that's the head Kobe's been using, that round ball head. I've been using that ultra head, the darter style head all day. Both have been working. The baits themselves. If you're not familiar with this, if you're a younger guy, if you've never seen somebody swim a grub before and today is surprising to you, here's what I'm gonna do. The very first link in the video description, if I can figure out a way to do it, I don't even know if I can do it. If I'm able to link to all of the grubs on Tackle Warehouse, like as one page, I'm gonna do it because you're gonna be mind blown. For a thing that nobody talks about, there's like 30 or 40 or 50 different kinds of single tail grubs. It's crazy. Personally, I've got two that stand out for me. Uh, you've got the Kalins and the Yamamoto. Kobe's been throwing that Kalins all day, five inch. This is the avocado color. Uh, I've been switching through some different colors of the Yamamoto, both the five inch and the four inch. Biggest difference between them, because both are great. Let me pull out a five inch of each. The first thing you're going to notice is they're not the same size, even though they're both five inch. See how much larger the tail section is on the Kalins? The Kalins has a more exaggerated action. It's also made of a more durable plastic. 
the Yamamoto, slightly downsized, slightly finessier, softer plastic. So I go through more of the Yamamotos. I mean, there's, there's a little pile of them down here from today, but they're cheap. I mean, they come in like, a, is it a 20 pack? Yeah, they come in a 20 pack. So it's not like we're talking about a bunch of money here, even if you went through a whole pack for a day of fishing, which we have not. I've gone through, I don't know, seven or eight all day. The thing about the Yamamoto is it's so soft. So middle of summer, more durable, more aggressive movement is great, warmer water. But especially as we go into fall, into winter, into the colder water, that Yamamoto is just a little softer. It'll swim with that great action and in colder water temperatures. As water gets colder, plastic gets more rigid. And the more rigid the bait to start with, it'll start to lose its action. So the Yamamoto is the one that I've found that will keep that action into the coldest water. Because you can do this on the hottest day of summer. You can do it on the coldest day of winter. It just works. Again, it's just an overlooked technique that a lot of people are missing. I mean, I've seen it work all through my childhood. Works great fishing for smallmouth like we are today. A few years ago, I was fishing with my buddy Ross England on Clear Lake. I was throwing a Kytec. I look over, he's throwing that single tail grub and he's catching them. It works even on pressured largemouth fisheries like Clear Lake. Now, one thing you need to know about these baits very, very simple. Whichever head style you prefer. Again, that's the one I've been throwing, that darter style head, that pointed head. But whatever style you choose, I want to rig it so that the point of the curly tail is up. I don't want to rig it down. So I just take this guy. In the case of the Yamamoto, there's a perfect seam on the bait. So I just follow that seam. Poke in through the top, slide her down pop out the side, bait sits perfectly straight, and again, that curly tail is on top. That's the way we like to fish that bait with that tail just back there, that basically a ribbon in the water. Those fish just come up and latch onto it. The fishing itself is easy. You've been watching us all day today. We've fished everything from 15 foot deep flats, you know, offshore structures, up to a foot, foot and a half of water up on flats, around the edges of docks. We're just keeping it in areas where there's no grass, we're swimming it right on bottom, just bumping it along, steady retrieve bumping. In places where there's grass, we're fishing it mid column. There's not a wrong way to do this. It's very easy. And then again, as far as, as gear goes, Kobe, he's been throwing it on a Mega Bass Windbuster braid. What pound leader are you using? Seven. Seven pound leader. I'm over here throwing it on straight bait finesse tackle. Oh, it's up there on the front deck. Straight up bait finesse tackle, straight seven pound fluorocarbon, super light rod. Oh, I have wrong one. That's all right. That's my spy bait. We did catch some on that setup today as well. But you can throw it, oh, I even caught one, my spinning rod right here. Seven, six medium braid to 10 pound fluoro. Uh, literally my two broad. So everything from a two broad to an ultralight bait finesse setup. There's almost not a wrong way to do it. Uh, obviously if you've got a heavier head, heavier wire hook, use a stouter combo, but you own a rod that can do this period. The baits are cheap. The technique is simple. If you're fishing a place where a lot of people are throwing a swim bait, try something different. Throw that grub, give it a whirl. If it doesn't work for you, that's okay. But you might be surprised to see an old school technique that people have forgotten about come full circle and work for you on a tough day. Now, I don't think we're done fishing yet. Of course, if we don't get another bite, we'll wrap it up right here. But I think we're gonna, it's laying down a little bit. Maybe we'll get to throw some evening top water or something like that. We're gonna keep on fishing, but I wanted to kind of clue you guys in while we did have a calm pocket here.
decent one, yeah. It came off that shallow dock. <laughs> Except we never put it down. So much for top water up there on the ground. <laughs> yeah. It's a good one, yeah. <laughs> Finished talking, picked my rod up, made one cast to the nearest dock. Beautiful, beautiful smallmouth. Five inch Yamamoto, so fun. All right guys, we're running out of light. We're gonna wrap it up here. Hopefully you guys enjoyed coming along. Hopefully you enjoyed seeing one of those old school techniques. If you did, let us know because maybe we'll do some more of this type of stuff. There are a lot of those forgotten techniques that still catch fish today. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon.